that took a minute longer than I thought it would. It had a big coating on it. You can see the end of it here. And that was good for like waterproofing it, but it was burned in some spots and it just looked horrible. Welcome to another hot day in South Carolina. The idea is we're going to try to up the game on the channel a little bit. So we're going to get some new angles, play with, uh, you know, settings and play with, I have a drone that I've never used. I just got a notification actually that they sell the gas tanks for the 86. And uh, apparently I, I didn't know, but thank you, shout out to you. So yeah, we're going to be fixing the gas tank or attempting to fix it. Um, let me show you guys what happened. Okay, so I'm not sure if you guys can see, but there are multiple spots, not just this one. And if you guys can see, I uncovered this one and uh, apparently there was a lot of them, but the main reason it wouldn't leak beforehand is because I guess so much dirt was in here that it actually clogged the holes. I could buy another one. I'm gonna try to not do it yet just because of the wait time and everything and I'd like to get this thing on the road. So I may order one in the future, but for now we're gonna attempt to fix this one. So step number one, is shaving down all the black that we painted and bringing out the metal to make sure that underneath we're okay. All right guys, as you guys can see, we have successfully taken off all of where it looks like it is rusted. Just wiped it off with a little bit of acetone. Now what we're going to be doing is doing the whole repair one more time. Hopefully this time it works. So it's done. As you can see, I actually had to do multiple layers. I packed it on. But what we're going to do actually this time is before we just accept that it's fixed, we're going to go to the gas station, carry this whole thing, and we're actually going to fill it up while we're at it because of all the pressure going down. We're going to see if it can handle the pressure or all the weight of the gas. Take this old girl because the other truck actually, let me show you. I don't know if you can tell, but she's way over there. And yeah, we're loaded up. We actually have, we have a uh, like 45, 50 foot gooseneck on it. Uh, we are going to be picking up like three cars tomorrow. That is the exact reason I bought the truck. Let's go to the gas station and uh, cross your fingers. Wish me luck. We need it. And as I was saying that, and the red truck windows actually don't work properly. Uh, they don't go up and down currently because old truck problems. I lied. We brought out the Honda. We got a good floor mat, so nothing to worry about. I don't see any fuel as of yet. Yeah, so apparently I wasn't prepared for failure and I didn't think about the fact that if I filled it up, and then it started leaking what I was to do because obviously I'm in the car, not the truck now. And so we're rushing home. Luckily I live literally like a mile from the gas station. This is the wife's car and it's gonna smell like fuel if I'm not careful, so. If it wasn't for this nice floor mat, it would be a lot worse. So that's the bright side. The bad part is that now we are two attempts in at fixing the fuel tank and that was the last time. I am not going to fix it, but I think I have an idea. Watch. Yep, this is it, a fuel cell. We didn't have this fuel cell, we had Yesterday, you guys didn't see this, it was in between the thing and this thing. 
we went actually about uh, six, you know, five or six hours towards Virginia. Actually found essentially a graveyard of Datsun 510s. If you guys know what those are, they're early Skylines essentially. And uh, the guy there was like hoarding parts and that's where this came from. We just got lucky with it. And so I was also thinking and thinking and thinking. And the more I thought about it, the better this option sounded. One reason, if you guys remember, the trunk of the 86 actually needs some rust repair right where the uh, tire used to go, just because it's a problematic area for those cars. And uh, two, we need to practice welding. And what better way than constructing things and welding them and putting them together and letting you guys watch. Without further ado, we are going to start to figure out how to mount the fuel cell. The idea is this. We're going to throw this one inside the trunk and we need it to be level with the rest of the trunk. So we're gonna to have to cut through the floorboard and somehow mount this to be hanging underneath. What we have here, are angle iron or aluminum. What we will be doing is essentially creating a cage around it. Seventeen and we're going to cut these out. We'll be cutting a section for this side, a section for this side, for this side, and across. cut it a tad bit longer each corner so it's exactly a square so this side this side this side and this side the uh, overall width or the length matches so what we'll be doing is putting one here one here and just to ensure we have the right angle because uh, if we were to weld it off of it the angle could vary a slight bit and this way it will not vary at all attaching it like so we're going to give it a go and see what happens. Measuring from corner to corner each way across and if it is 100% square then it should be the same. So in this case we'll go from here to here, from this corner to this corner and it should be the same measurement. 25 and 1 eighth and 25, 24 and 5 eighths. So as you can see it needs to be moved a little bit because it's still, it can still shift a touch. What we will be doing is mounting it like mounting it like this. And what we will do, mark right here and right here and cut this little section out so that it sits in. So the fuel cell is finally in here. We cut the slot in. The only problem was that whenever we went to put it on, apparently it was a touch too small and it did not want to go in. So we tried to obviously put it in without doing the cutting here, but it would not go in whatsoever. So we ended up having to cut it and then opening it literally just a couple millimeters and then putting it in. But what we're gonna do is after we build the whole cage, then we're going to reinforce this little corner again, just so that 
it'll keep that integrity. Start building up. Whoa, mosquitoes are on a hunt today. Um, these, yep, exactly the same. So we'll start building this out um, with the box in there, obviously. So it just, it's gonna be stuck in there forever. So. Obviously my welds are not pretty, but what we're doing, because this is lower than this up here, this pokes out farther than this. And so we're gonna try and weld it up like this corner. All right, so we welded it out. Now we're going to see if this thing fits. I'm gonna have to pry it open a touch, probably. There we go. Slide right in. And then on the bottom, yep, we're just gonna have it sit flush on this bottom side. Try to go all the way. So we're missing part of our floorboard, but we knew this already. Uh, the main reason I did this in black is so that it doesn't continue rusting because I knew we were gonna get to this point, but I didn't know what the outcome was gonna be. And as you can see, we cut out the biggest spot of rust if you can tell this thing was here i'm not sure exactly the orientation but it was in here and uh it would poke up and so it would create more rust and that's pretty much why these things start rusting in here because there's like a little bump in here so the idea is to have this flush with this or down some so that we can put a nice little carpet in here question is how much can we go down? I guess for now, we have to cut this up a little more. Seems like this whole bottom piece for sure is coming out and maybe a touch on some corners. <laughs> There's no turning back now. It still does not go in. Out of all four corners, this side, is in a touch that one is too this one not exactly but it's right on the edge and this one for sure will not go in but that little patch of rust there kind of has us having to go in so what we may do is try to cut this thing cut some slots in it and then try to pry it open and once we can pry it open it should sink in there decently You have an 86 out there save me some time because I will go buy all of them eventually but save me some time and uh, just make sure there's no water in your floorboard please well she's pretty much in the spot she's gonna be This blade is not cutting it, not at all. A lot of this aluminum is getting stuck. It's already chipped. I need to get something that cuts it without causing damage to this as well. So now we're going to tack these things on here. We're going to measure it out and tack it. Yep, there we go. This side, just to double check. We need that temp to drop real quick. Not ideal, but I'd much rather do that. I have finished welding it up. Not 100%. I didn't want to do it all at once. I'm going to wait a little bit so that it does cool down just because if I do too much at once, it'll melt through this plastic. We're going to go ahead and test it out so you can see, give or take, what's going to happen. 
So the idea is, for now, to have it like this, so that it's flat, as flat as we can get it, and it will be fastened down. And on the other side of this, we'll put another metal plate onto this, so that we can put some nice uh, fasteners onto this. Um, and I'm gonna need to strengthen this a little bit more because this is a little too flexible for my comfort. I think next time uh, we're just going to start buying things and as much as it sucks, I don't, I'm not the kind to waste things, but because I don't have things on hand, like things have to be put off. So uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna try and get this done. Not today, obviously. Um, so we actually leave to New York tomorrow um, and I have to go to work right now um, so we're gonna go to work and then I still have to return the uh, 50 foot gooseneck it's still sitting over there so I'm gonna have to go and do that after work tonight otherwise because it is rented uh, so we're gonna have to go return that and uh, at night but I will have this video up for you you guys should be watching this as I'm on the plane uh, because I'm planning to edit it on the plane. Unfortunately, <laughs> the car's still not running, but we are well on our way. We're doing things the right way. We could have ordered a fuel tank, but the trunk still needed to be done anyways. It helps us practice our welding and uh, it also, we will be patching it as well. So it's not just going to be dropped in and left cut open. So you guys will see the way we will enclose that. But for now, I think that's going to be it. Next one, we're going to be routing the lines and doing all that and hopefully making the car running. As I say that, I don't believe it, but hopefully we'll have it running and uh, hopefully we can patch the rest of this rust. So that way we can get this thing on the road sooner than later. Also, we should have a dash on the way and uh, I'll be showing you guys that. We'll have to redo the dash. Somebody just tore into this thing like they had no mercy. I don't know who you are, but I will find you and I will make you fix this. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. Catch you guys in the next one. And uh, as always, just one foot in front of the other. Peace out.